Hello, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello everyone and welcome back to Ask Rob and Rob, the show you ask us questions and we give you answers. Every single Tuesday we turn up because you keep turning up with great questions. And that's probably for two reasons. One, you're an inquisitive bunch. And two, we make it very easy for you to get your questions in. We do. If you've got your phone in your hand right now, then hit pause on the podcast and dial this number 013 808 0035. That's 013 808 0035. 30 seconds later, boom, you can have sent your question over to us and be well on your way to an answer. If you prefer to do it via your laptop, that is no problem at all. Just go to the propertyhub.net slash ask. So that's how you do it. Now let's have a listen to today's first question, which comes in from Jay. Hi, Rob, it's Jay here. I just think you guys do an amazing job with your podcast. And um, I also subscribe to your magazines. But anyway, my quick question is, um, I've got quite a bit of money um, and um, I'm looking for, I really want to understand what I should be looking at when I'm looking at development finance. So me providing finance for developments. Um, I know it's something that you guys also look at, so it'd be good to get an idea of what type of things I should be doing in due diligence when funding these projects. Thank you. Thanks. Great job, guys. Okay, Jay, really good question and really encouraging to hear that you're thinking about doing due diligence in this situation because there are a lot of people who bite your hand off if you say that you're in a position to lend money to property investors. If you say it loudly at a meetup, you'll get lots of drinks bought for you, I'm sure. little hack there. But you, of course, do not want to be lending money to just anyone. You should be taking it really seriously. You should be doing a lot of due diligence. So it's something that I'm quite well versed in. I'll try and give you the key points. There's a lot more to it, of course. But I'd say that there are probably five key things that you want to be looking at. First of all, look at the track record of the person you're lending to. You need to be able to trust in their ability to execute the project. So they might say that they can, but do they have proof that they've done it before? And to flip that around, if you're somebody who wants to raise money from somebody else, from a private investor, you need to be demonstrating that track record. So that's the first thing. Second thing is to get it secured. So if you're going to be lending money on a project, you want to be taking a charge, preferably first charge over that asset. What that means is if the worst happens and they are unable to pay you back, you can repossess that property and sell it in order to get your money back. That's what mortgage lenders do. It's what bridging lenders do. And it's what you should do as well, because you basically are being the bank in this situation. Third thing, you should get the agreement drawn up by an experienced solicitor really, really important. This is not the kind of thing where you want to be downloading a template off the internet and sort of changing a few words about hoping for the best. Very important that you get a solicitor who's experienced in acting for lenders to do all this. The paperwork is very specific. It needs to be done in a certain way for it to stand up and for your charge to be registered correctly. So absolutely do that. And then back to the deal itself, look at the exit strategy as well. So how are you going to be repaid? Are they going to be selling the property? Are they going to be refinancing it? If they're selling, then is there evidence that properties sell well in that area? If they're refinancing, have they spoken to a broker? Are they going to be able to refinance? Because it's no good them borrowing money from you, saying that they'll pay you back by refinancing, then finding out that there's some reason, something to do with the property or something to do with them as an individual, that means they can't get borrowing. And make sure that there's enough time for them to do that within the loan term that you agree with them. And then finally, your solicitor will do this for you, but make all the same checks as you would if you were buying it. Because your loan is secured against the property, therefore you need to be really certain about the value of the property and make sure that there's nothing that you're unaware of that will affect its value if you come to sell it later. So in summary, there's two parts to it really. There's getting it all tied up legally, correctly, And then there's making sure that you've done your research into the individual and you've got faith in their ability to execute the project and their ability to pay you back. If you do those two things and you do them well, you'll be absolutely fine. And the fact that you're asking this question now is a very positive sign. It sounds like a lot of work and it kind of is, but it is worth taking seriously. Well, I'll tell you what, Jay. Talk about people buying new pints. You probably owe Rob D one there. That's what they term in the industry a value bomb. Right. Let's see if we can keep up with that. With our next question. Hi, Rob and Rob. It's Pete here uh, from the south coast of England. Um, really loving your podcast. Uh, listen as I commute to work every day. 
Uh, courses are great, so just thank you for, for everything you're doing. Uh, my question is about uh, second charges, and I have a few property, three properties that um, the loan to value has finally dipped below 75% a bit, and there's probably not enough money in there if I took normal 75% loan to value mortgages to to kind of build enough to do to do another property, but I'm really keen to. I heard there were products where you could get second charges on buy select, um, buy select properties to take you above the 75% loan to value. I wondered if you if that's the case, and if it is, what your thoughts are uh, on those products, and uh, if there are any other ways that I might be able to leverage the properties I have to to enable me to get the deposit together for some more. Um, so uh, thanks again for everything you're doing, and I uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye. Well, thank you, Pete. I feel a bit under pressure here, Rob, to magic something up, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do it. Pete, second charges are really interesting, and actually, if you're a subscriber to the magazine, you'd have seen that we've actually had this covered in some detail before. Good news is, if you're not a subscriber to the magazine, you can get the digital back copies. Little plug in there. There we go. But to answer your question specifically... Most second charges are only going to be up to 75%. If there are any above 75%, the charges for them are probably not going to make it worthwhile, and they're not going to go much beyond 75%, maybe, say, 80 But let's just say you can get 80% products. The cost involved to get 10% out, unless it's 10% of a prime central London property, it's probably not going to be worth doing. So unfortunately, while I like your line of thinking and your eagerness to push things forward and move things on, you're going to have to wait for the market to kick in a little bit more or add a bit of value to those properties to be able to extract some more money out. Unless, of course, Mr. D has a magic money wand. Oh, now the pressure's been flipped back on me. Um, no, unfortunately, I did not. Rob is absolutely right. As always, it is going to be a case of saving up or of adding value to those properties because the costs are just not going to make it worthwhile. So if you can find some way of forcing the value up, so then by the time you get back to 75%, you're getting to 75% of a higher number, then maybe that's up worth looking at. But in general, no, there is a common misconception about second charges that maybe that you can have two of them running alongside sort of two 75% mortgages side by side. That's not the case. So if you've got one mortgage up to 50%, then you've got room for another of say 20, 25%. But if you're already up about 70, it's for the extra broadly not going to be worth it. But Pete, I have to thank you because Rob has just gone on record by saying Rob is right as always. So I've, I can now play that back to him whenever I feel the need to. So thank you, Pete. I've now got some audio leverage. <laughs> <laughs> well, something else that you are completely right about is the fact that if you subscribe to the Property Hub magazine, you can get all the back issues for free. So if you start your subscription now, you'll get ooh, what seven or eight but back issues as well. So you can go on a real reading binge. Every quarter, we have a new issue. In every issue, there's a mortgage feature and a bridging finance feature as well. So second charge loans have been covered, as have loads of other topics. So it's a brilliant way of extending your knowledge about that topic and plenty more. All for the cost of £5 a quarter. That can't be right, can it, Rob? Tell me, you'll, you'll know. There must be more for delivery. No, there isn't. That's including delivery. Gosh, all this free stuff. And then a magazine delivered of that quality for £5. Well, blow me over. That is incredible. <laughs> well, for those people who've also fallen over at that extreme value, <laughs> please pick yourselves up and dust yourselves down and make sure you join us on Thursday for the Property Podcast. And of course, we'll be back next Tuesday with Ask Rob and Rob. So until then, cheerio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.